Tell me your honest truth, Art. That's all I want. I think you're looking for meaning in everybody else and not able to find meaning for yourself. Ooh, wait, that's very interesting. I'm looking for meaning in everyone else and not able to find meaning in myself. Hello. Hi. Is this a gag? Yeah, who is this? This is Veronica. How you doing? I'm doing good, Veronica. Um, listen, it says here that um, you have a boyfriend that you are currently with right now. And it says that he's a yeah. licensed therapist and that he d- he does not like my show. That is absolutely correct. I'm looking okay. at him and he's not happy <laughs> that I'm calling Okay. Him. Okay, I, and can I talk to him? Because it says you want me to talk to him so that we can hash it out. And this is actually something I've been wanting to do for a long time, and people who've listened to the podcast for a long time know. I've, I've been wanting to talk to somebody who does not like me, because I'm lucky enough that people come on the phone and they're excited to talk to me, but I want to experience what the opposite is like. Well, here you go. Here's the thing. is I listen to you all the time. He hates when I listen to you. He cannot. Perfect. Help, uh, yeah, me. put me on the phone. Yeah, put me on the phone with him. His name's Art. Okay, great. Hello. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Art? Oh, <laughs> just just trying to enjoy another Friday night. How about you, my friend? <laughs> okay. Am I just am I interrupting that goal? No, no. It's it's not that. I okay. I think it's more. I don't think Veronica understands that I don't want to work outside of work or be reminded of work outside of work, which is why I don't like your show. It's not necessarily a you thing, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. to be fair, I don't really know you or how you might do things. I might overhear her when she's watching it or something like that. Um, And you know what? That's great. You provide a really great needed service and, and stuff like that. You know, that's not but, what I wanted you know from you, Art. I wanted criticism. I want you to tell me how much you hate criticism. me. I want you to tell Please, give me what you want. Give me, tell, me the, uh, tell me your honest truth, Art. That's all I want. I, you don't have to worry about offending me. You don't have to be polite. Just tell me the honest truth. I just don't, I don't think, you know, you should be given advice without the training. That's the main thing. That's the main thing. I mean, I guess okay, it's not fair. really advice. Don't give it. You know, it's, it's one of those things. I, I think, you know, it's good that you you can be a friend to these people, right? And I never said you know that. sometimes. Well, I know, I know. I, I it's good you can be a person that people can lean into, like a therapist. Um, but you know what do you got? What do you got? Just practice. Did I mean? Usually, it comes down to people telling you like, "Hey, uh, I you know." You, you lean into it. Like, how did you get into this? It, it was because one of your, your friends said, like, oh, you're really good at listening to people and stuff like that. Sorry, no, my friends, my, friends don't, uh, my friends don't like to talk to me about things going on in their lives. They don't trust me with that stuff. Why is that? Is that because you, they, they're afraid you're going to say it on the radio? No, I don't think that. I, just, I don't think they respect me. Because you feel bad at night. Like, what's the... What's the balance there? So, Art, I, I know, um, this is a serious question, okay? I'm not trying to fuck with you. This is not a gotcha yeah. thing. I wanna, okay. All right. So, so oh, you're fine. What, like, what do you think I don't know? Like, in the practice of talking to people about stuff, what do you think I need to know mm. that I don't know that makes this bad? Hmm. I think, honestly, uh, well, you know, I just kind of reverse my own thought. I think that people feel, the nice thing about you, I guess, here, here's a, your shit sandwich. The nice thing about you is that people feel like they develop a relationship with you. Because honestly, the relationship is the key, you know, thing to change or creating mm. things. And so people, they know you, helps right. to build uh, comfortability. As well as being detached from them. I think the other piece of that is, is, Okay, they listen to you and they think they know you, and at the same time, <laughs> you don't know what the fuck you're doing. It's true. Which, you know, can on occasion, I think, if anything, it's like, okay, well, you know, it's a good release. Yeah, and there's the other part of the 
shit sandwich that's good is, you know, at least you can give them that out. But it's just a, I, I think, I think you're doing great. Honestly. No, My no, tell thing, me the truth. Damn it, Art. Don't, I want the truth. All right. I get people coming in here is, I don't all the time be, telling I don't me nice listen. things. I, I want the want truth, be, Art. I don't want to be at work when I'm trying to relax. I don't want to listen to to people's problems outside of my job you know that's that's that's, that's why i don't like you that's my thing that's fair. and you know like there you. are i do throw the criticisms of like yeah you know you don't entirely know what you're doing and you're doing i don't great service for so they <laughs> but well, here's the thing you know here's okay. the thing i've been thinking well i've been thinking i part of me and i i i i i, I try to set this up where it's more so you can talk to a gecko about anything and it's almost a little bit more journalistic than it is therapistic because sometimes people just call in and you know i don't i don't want to be the advice guy i don't want to be does does it feel like voyeurism to you yes it, it, it is it's voyeurism well it's voyeurism for me and for everyone watching and i think that in the process of, um, you know, explaining themselves, the people do get some kind of a relief because maybe they're explaining something that they haven't gotten the chance to explain to anyone else in their personal life. And then mm-hmm. we're just kind of sitting here listening. I'm not trying to, you know, get, I mean, I do sometimes just because it comes out of me, but I don't, I'm not trying to give people mm-hmm. advice, advice. I'm mostly trying to just, like, ask them stuff about themselves. More journalistically than therapistically. But but also, you could find a lot of examples of me not doing that and me just totally pretending to be a therapist. Oh, yeah, probably. But I think, Definitely. you know, honestly, half the time, I, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing in my job, and I think I do. Ah, okay. Job, but, All right, so how are we any different, know, Art, I, if you don't know what you're doing either? Well, because I'm actually trained and I, I know what I'm doing, it just feel like i don't know what i'm doing there's the what? issue you know it's, it's more of a confidence thing i said i wasn't trying to get you but i i said i got you just now you got me you got me there yeah no, yeah I no, but I you know I, you, I, 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 go ahead. I think go you've ahead. experienced it yourself i mean someone will say something and it's like you almost have like that out of body experience where you're like i don't know what the hell to say to this 100%. you know and i've heard terrible awful things and just very weird things. And, you know, sometimes just saying that is the big thing. I think I'm honestly, you know, if you want my opinion, I have no idea if you've ever considered going to school for it or anything like that. But, you know, from what I've heard, you do a pretty decent job. You'd consider it with a little more training. But, you know, you do pretty well for yourself, I imagine. And this is fine. And people are interested in, you know, people i think i think that's a little i don't know that feels a little gross to me but you know if if it's the if it is a getting the person into therapy then great if that's their you know what tell me why it feels gross to you i think in a lot of ways it's just kind of like getting like getting off on other people's things you know it's a lot like gossip mm. and shit like that i guess like, why people like mm. gossip and things i don't i'm not mm. biggest you know it, it's just one of those things I, it's that's my personal opinion but i respect that well well it, you know but again at the end of the day looking for criticism for criticism's sake that's it the biggest thing i just don't want to be reminded of work what is what <laughs> i'm not at right work now? Oh, I made some pasta. I made a, and me a nice pasta and brought Veronica some flowers. And this is what she, uh, <laughs> I was shall she, what she gives back. <laughs> Art, um, so. tell, all right, tell me this, Art. Mm-hmm. All right, when you, when somebody okay. says something to you and you, and you're real, and you're, you know, fancy schmancy, like my real friend therapy. Like oh, okay. Um, no, I'm just fucking with you. When someone says something real to you, uh, uh, yeah. something you don't know what to say to them, what do you say? What do you? How do you deal with that? I'd honestly be like, probably like, you know, wow, I 
I don't really know what to say to that. And just be honest with them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's really comes down to feeling, right? You're feeling it out. And like, usually <clears throat> whatever you're feeling is what the other person's feeling in the room. Mm. Um, and a lot of the time, you know, it, with that, if they're telling you something, you know, like, I mean, just having someone say like, wow, that's fucked up or wow, that's, you know, a lot. And just mm. being that. They expect everybody to look at you for answers and they expect everybody to be like, you know, oh, you know this or people do go. I mean, that's that's a lot of the time why we don't go to friends for therapy, because I mean, for one, they can't be impartial. But for two, they're going to try to tell you what to do, mm. you know, and it's a lot like it's a lot like when your doctor needs or tells you you need to go work out. Right. You might go work out for three days and then after that you're like ah fuck that it didn't really work unless you truly believe you need to work out you're not going to do it right just like i mean that's that's empathy and sympathy right like if we're down in a hole together and i can know how i would get out of the hole it might not be the same as how you'd get out of the hole that's how i get out of the hole i can rather than just being like wow hey i'll be down in this hole with you together uh, but you have to figure out how to get out of this hole on your own I like that. That makes sense. Well, that makes sense considering that people are wired very differently to uh, how they want to solve their problems and in, in terms of what works for them. Mm-hmm. I mean, we could we could get into a whole discussion on why, you know, I feel my personal opinions on different theories of therapy and like, you know, fuck solution focused therapy. You're just giving. People so listen, all right, what do you but, think is wrong with me just as a person? As a person, as a person. Well, like from what you've heard, you know, I think that. Well, for one, Veronica likes you too much, which is an issue. But the other thing, really, is I think that I don't know. I, I, I it just gives me a little. I mean, I, I imagine you start. I, I just don't know what you get out of this, and it kind of that kind of freaks me out a little bit. You know, mm. I don't know, I imagine. Do you think? Might or you think might I not s- know, but. Do you think I have like sin? If you get off on it, that's great. No, I don't think that. But I mean, ignorance is just as bad of a thing as, you know, bad intentions, right? Hmm. All right, but outside of all this, like, like me as a part, like, forget about the, my gecko show. Like, what do you think? Like, oh, is just yeah, yeah. wrong with me as a guy? <laughs> oh, I, you you live in your mom's basement? No, not well, anymore. Nothing wrong with that either. I lived in my mom's basement uh, for like a year and a half. I don't anymore. Nice. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think, you know, I think you're looking for meaning in everybody else and not able to find meaning for yourself. Ooh, wait, that's very interesting. I'm looking for meaning in everyone else and not able to find meaning in myself. Interesting. Where do you think... Mm -hmm. um, what what has what has led you to that belief? Well, I mean, look at what you do, right? Hmm. I mean, it, you are looking at everybody else constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, I mean, do you give yourself time for introspection? Do you ever, you know, allow oh, yeah. yourself to, for you? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm always I'm always thinking about. Uh, why I do the I'm always thinking about why I do the things I do and because I because I really do feel as though I, I live in like this infinite universe of infinite possibilities and infinite happiness as well as infinite depression and sorrow and there's at all times infinite decisions I could make and it's like in all that infinite why do I make the decisions that I make I think about that every day I mean, that's- yeah, that sounds super overwhelming, right? Yeah. And I imagine... How do I, how do I deal feeling, with that? Well, how do you deal with that? I mean, you feel, must feel stuck. And in a lot of ways, it sounds like one way is figuring out how everybody else does it. Mm. Right? Yes. Yes. That is a part... It's but, funny you say that because that is a part of this. I have one of my biggest problems in my life is I'm very indecisive... And I'll ask, mm-hmm. I'll go and I'll ask everyone's opinion on things. Like I'll ask all my friends and my parents and my, you know, what just anyone close to me. Like anytime I have like a life 
thing or whatever. I'm very indecisive, so I'll always ask other people. And maybe this is like a version of that. Like I'm looking at other people's <laughs> stuff to get a better idea of my own stuff. And maybe that's also a little bit what the listener gets out of it too. Of like, you know, they they're they're learning a little bit about how they feel or their own meaning of things uh, by listening to other people give ideas. I, mean, I will say that, you know, that's a very big piece of what I do. I mean, you know, you, the only person in the room who's the expert on you is you, right? True. Yeah, I know I have, I have like some education or whatever, but, you know, and I think in a lot of ways, <clears throat> me helping people figure it out helps me figure it out just like you helping people figure it out helps you figure it out which is a mm -hmm. kind of hard like i mean it's a it's a hard place to be and I, I think you know life is shitty and we there isn't really much of a meaning to anything which gives meaning to everything but figuring that out for yourself or figuring out what gives you whatever it is I mean, say you woke up tomorrow and everything was perfect and you were feeling fantastic. What would that look like? Well, I, can I, well, actually this kind of seg, this segues me into what I wanted to ask you just now, because you said that life is shitty. You asked me what, how I would feel if everything was perfect. I truly believe, I actually believe really in my gut that everything mm -hmm. right now in this moment as it is is already perfect it's already mm -hmm. perfect and my biggest my problem does not lie in i need to change and shift external circumstances to make things even more perfect my problem lies eternally in my own perspective of being able to constantly consistently see those perfect things for what they are. I mean, just, I mean, I'm not even talking about, like, my life specifically. I'm talking about, like, having arms and legs and a cup of clean water and shit. Like, that's perfect as it is. And I feel like it's my issue that I can't see that and be just happy for that. So let me ask you something. Mm. You said that you, you mm -hmm. said just now that life is shitty. Why do you think life is shitty? Do you really believe that? I don't think I necessarily really believe that, but I think a lot of people believe that. And I think that, you know, the, the piece of it is, and this isn't me as a therapist, this is just me as a person, but I think that, you know, a big piece of it is everything is pretty much based on your own experience. How you, how, when something happens to you or, you know, and that same thing happens to somebody else, you're going to respond in two separate, entirely different ways, right? Just like, you know, being, trying to be thankful that, yeah, you know, we are pretty lucky to live in a place where we have running water and a roof over our heads and <clears throat> all of these things, you know, and you still have your own problems, right? I mean, at the end of the, at the, end of the day, the only one that feels what you feel and goes through what you go through is you. And it's really True. just how you choose to deal with it or not deal with it. Right. Because, True. well, maybe the show is just a big roundabout way to not have to deal with your things. And <laughs> hope that it magically comes to you. I don't know. Oh, are you talking about but, me again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about you again. So it is, it but, is, um, so to, I'll, to answer that, uh, it is a way to not think about my problems. I'm f when I'm doing my stream and recording my thing, it's three hours where I'm not thinking about my problems because I'm thinking about other people's problems. But I don't think that's any different from like if I was like a fucking if I like to sew, and I don't feel like I, because I'm I'm not thinking about my own problems because I'm present. In the moment of what I'm doing. That's why I'm not thinking about other people's... That's why I'm not thinking about problems. Not even because I'm thinking about other people's stuff. I've, I feel like that because yeah. I'm just present with what I'm doing. Because I have to be... Because that's how you have a conversation with someone is to actually be in it. And when I'm not doing this, 
I'm I'm back again, staring at the infinite the what what I was talking about earlier the infiniteness of yeah. life and the universe and I could make any single I could make any possible decision at all. Uh, but here, as I'm talking to you, I'm not thinking about that. I'm just thinking about w- what's right in front of me, which is talking to you and trying to do this podcast well. So mm-hmm. that that I would say is the the big thing that I get out of it in terms of uh, you know the avoidance of my own problems. But you could say that about fucking playing basketball. You know, you're, mm-hmm. you're focusing on the game. I think it's important for you and me, for that matter, to recognize. Okay. I might be escaping my own reality in when I'm doing this or when I'm, you know, when I'm working or something like that. Um, but you're still bringing you. I mean, that's that's the important thing. And you know, I'm not condoning what you do, but I will say that if you're going to continue doing it, bring yourself. Try to bring yourself to it. What do you, what do you mean? Because yeah, when, just now when you just now when you said whatever you're doing, you're bringing you to it. What do you tell me? What you mean by that? And tell me what you mean by I should bring myself. Don't, don't I mean don't be somebody for anybody else. The reason why you're good at what you do, or the reason why people listen to you, is because they're seeing you, or they're seeing a version of you. But you know, I think that to truly bring you to that. Bring in that existential shit. Bring in that stuff that you're scared of. You know, yeah. look into that. Add add to it. Throw your own ulterior motives in there, right? Because I, I I mean I think you probably have them. You just aren't acknowledging them, or you don't motives. want to see them. Yeah, of trying to figure out how to enjoy just living and the things that you have. Yeah, well, that's that's all. The, I mean, that's all the shit I was I was just talking about. Um, I want to know from you, yeah. Art. Is your name Art or Ant? <coughs> Art, like Arthur. Art, Arthur. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is your real name Arthur? Art, Art. Forget I asked that question. Um, You're good. What is the? What is your meaning? What is your personal meaning of life? Why do you do what you do? Why do I do what I do? Um, I think because I'm good at it. I don't particularly love what I do. I like what I do. I think if I loved what I did, I would take it home with me. I don't want to have to take it home with me until I have to talk to you on the phone on a Friday night. But no offense. If this is That was more of a jab at Veronica. I apologize. No, um, but I appreciate Veronica no, for I, keeping you, know, you on the phone this long. Because I know that you don't want to be here, <laughs> but I'm enjoying talking to you. No, I, I am... I, Oh, she's apparently and you know in what? chat. And but... you know what, Art? I think I think a small part of you is enjoying talking to me too. But anyway, what you were saying, you I... don't like what you do, but you love it. But you don't love what you do, but you like it. Yeah. Because, you know, I think at the end of the day, you're going to have good days and bad days. And it's really just, you know, how you deal with it. I mean, a job's a job's a job at the end of the day. Um, But I think, you know... I think I'm good at what I do. I think that that really helps. Um, but I don't know. It's just kind of one of those things. You lean into it. I, I guess for me, nothing really. I'm very in the same boat of you. Nothing really feels like it matters. So everything kind of matters. You know? uh, if you could now be doing. Con- it- let me ask you, if you could be yeah. doing anything, if you could literally just wave a magic wand and you could get paid to do anything at all, what is it that you would do? Um, I don't know. Maybe just read books. But like, not really any job in particular. I'm very lazy, I will say. Um, mm-hmm. So, really not a whole lot. Uh, I, yeah, if I could read books and you know, just kind of hang out with my friends. If I was paid to do that, that'd be great. Unfortunately, you, really, you wouldn't get like you um, wouldn't get like bored after a while. Of don't you want like a challenge of some kind? Sometimes, you know, I I will say that at the end of the day, I don't know if I'm going to be doing this job for my whole life and the rest of my life. I I will say there's a part of me that always wants to be doing it in some aspect. 
because people are pretty amazing, as I'm sure you are well aware. Um, and, you know, even if I'm old, I mean, I've done, you know, construction. I've done, uh, I was a farmhand for years. I, you know, a lot of physical labor and, and things like that. That are There's a lot of joy in that, you know, you get to, to see the fruit of your later labor, fruit of your Fruit of your fruit of the loom. This is a a uh, ad for underwear. Um, Art, do you have? But, you know, do you I have, would. Do you have a therapist? I do. I do. Yeah, what do you? I see her every. You, so when you go to therapy, what do you typically talk to your therapist about? Um, probably my anxiety. I've got uh, pretty bad general anxiety. Um, Interesting. And a little bit of trauma mixed in there, but <clears throat> I think. Yeah, just mostly how I deal with it and dealing with like shame um, and just the general emotions. You know, there's a lot of shit like that that comes up when you, when you when when you when you have a client who comes in and they want to talk about shame and anxiety. Do you think that like your ex- your personal experience with it uh, and the fact that you like still deal with it does that make you better or or maybe even worse i don't know like how does that affect the way that you talk to them about it um i wouldn't necessarily say worse i think it's it's interesting because you know i i like to think of it <clears throat> like i said you're the expert on you right and so it's a collaborative approach and so essentially i do my job as you know, <clears throat> we're going to be walking down a hallway together. There's a lot of different doors we can go into or not go into. And it's really up to you where you go. But to better understand things like shame and anxiety, I try to help people create their own definitions of those, right? Like, that's one of the very first things I do. Mm. It's like, okay, well, what is shame in your body? What does anxiety feel like for you? Mm. What are each of these feelings? And how do we understand them? And then, and then once we can do that, like, for instance, for shame... All shame is, is when your needs aren't being met, but rather than looking at where they're not being met, you put it back on yourself for having those needs in the first place, right? Mm. So if we can understand that, we can understand that <clears throat> shame is not only that, but it's also just a response to help us fit in and be around other people and how we can better use that. And in a lot of ways, how I can better help my un- myself understand that and create my own better understanding. When I think- you are, te- sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. I was going to ask when you talk through these things with your client, does, is that help you under, does that reinforce the ideas for you in a personal level? Sometimes. Certainly. But I mean, the other, the other thing about me is at the end of the day, it, the really hard part, I would say the hardest part is I, with all my personal biases and all of these things, I can't judge the other person and I will not judge the other person for telling me anything. A person could, can literally tell me anything and I won't judge them. And I, again, have heard some awful, awful, awful things. But you know what? They're not there for judgment they're not there for whatever they're just there to talk and yeah sometimes it does help me continue to formulate my own formulate form my own opinions on things and and all sorts of other stuff but i think you know it still is hello at the end of the day just two people in a room when somebody tells you something really fucked, let's say somebody tells you they did something really fucked up. Because I also try, and this is, I'm not, I don't want to declare things about myself because I'm always, I, this is a goal I'm working towards. And I think I'm pretty good at it, is also being like, I feel like, especially in my personal life, people could tell me anything about themselves or about me or about whatever. Or something they do, or just anything, and I won't judge them because I I don't feel like it is a 
I like the phrase only, I don't believe in, I'm not religious, but I like the phrase only God can judge. Because even if there isn't a God, just the implication that it's not a mortal ability to judge. And so let me ask you, that: when you're in your sessions, even if you don't say anything internally, do you form judgments about people that you have to fight against? Oh, certainly. I mean, I'm a person, right? But yeah, overtly, I'm not going to judge them. And I have to kind of, you know, work it out to not. I mean, that's I mean, that's part of the training in and of itself, too. Right. Is like you got to be able to essentially create a face or a stone wall or, or whatever, um, you know, because the slightest thing or the slightest movement can say a lot about a person. Right. Body language tells so much more. Um but <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I'll certainly judge, but you know, it's my goal not to, or at least not to show that, or at least be open to that. But I, cause I'm not going to judge them. I can't judge them. It's not my job to judge. It's my job to listen. Right. Definitely <clears throat> be there, but yeah, you know, and, and I think like there's been things that I have literally only ever repeated to my therapist. And that's like the only time I will ever say that, you know, there's some stuff that's locked away and that's, I mean, that's, I mean, I imagine you've heard the same thing and I, it, the, or some of them. And I think that, you know, how you deal with it says a lot. I, I think that's part of why. I don't like when I overhear Veronica listening to you because it's, you know, I, I have cultivated a pretty good amount of ways to be able to just leave work at work. Mm. Just as I imagined you do. It's almost like, you know, not to say you're two different people, but there's two different parts of you. Oh, yeah. I mean, you have to. Well, yeah. As soon as I'm done, I'm going to forget about you as soon as we're off the phone easily. Oh yeah, but um, no. Actually, I don't think I'll forget about you. I'll remember you um when I'm thinking about uh when I'm thinking about what calls I want to put in the podcast. So like that was a good call. You know what I like? Here's how I think about this art. Right, I've talked about this on the podcast before. Is like well, I'm on the phone with you right now, and this is this is to the point of leaving your work at work. So because I don't want to be insensitive or even if it is whatever i'm on the phone with no, you right fine. now so in th- so in this moment i'm with i'm with you we're talking i know who i feel yeah. a i feel like i feel a connection to you art over the phone you know we we're, we're talking we're having a real conversation like we're i'm feeling very present with you right now and i feel like i can do that with anyone who calls into the show and then again, and then in, but in order to be able to do that, in order to be able to show up with the energy to be able to be fully present in the moment that I am with the person, I have to be able to completely forget about them as soon as I'm not with them. But if I'm with you, yeah. I'm with you. And if I'm not with you, I'm not with you. Yeah. I mean, I, I, that's exactly the same thing I have to do. Right. I, I mean, I, there's the things that, you know, I would say compartmentalizing is the wrong word, but almost like looking at a, you know, <clears throat> I, if I'm with another client or whatever, I am not going to, I'm not going to remember what somebody's boyfriend's name is or who their no. parent is or what they did or whatever. But then as soon as I'm with that person again, it immediately all comes back. I can't, I can't really explain it, but yeah, it's just course. like, Oh, tell me about or whatever and they're like oh yeah no how'd you oh yeah certainly but you know I totally get that because there's just too many things at the end of the day to remember and again we're just people right yeah that's why I always forget people's names because I almost well because I feel like names are the to to, I, I, I forget the name to make space for more important things like you know Mm -hmm. Felix and shit yeah, Felix the Cat, the famous 1980s yeah, movie. Yeah, Felix the Cat, the famous 1980 movie. 
Mm-hmm. No, I would say that, uh, yeah, it's very much very, very similar. Like I, I have had sessions where in the middle of it, I will forget the person's name. And I have had to be like, oh shit. Oh, okay. What am I? Okay. There they are again. But I think, you know, the other piece to it is too, is truly listening isn't, you know, thinking about how you're going to respond or whatever else. It's just listening. Right. Mm-hmm. Because like if I, if, if I was working with a couple, for instance, and they might be in an argument, a lot of people don't realize that two people in an argument, pretty much, if you're in a relationship, you both want the same thing. You're just really bad at communicating (laughs) and to really listen to really put yourself in charge of being like okay the whole thing i want to get is i want this person to tell me what they're trying to tell me i want to be able to attempt to repeat back to them what they're telling me before i formulate my response right yes exactly exactly and Mm -hmm. it's i think people think that that is like uh, uh, like you're not adding anything when you're doing that, but I'm like, no, I'm yeah. doing that to show that I actually understood what you were saying so that whatever it is I do add is based off of what you just told me and not just like a random fucking thing that makes it so that you just wasted your breath talking to me just now. Exactly. It's exactly that, you know, and if you can do that, I, I think, you know, yeah, it might feel like. <laughs> you know, some people get annoyed with that, maybe, but you know, then you just view why they might be annoyed or like, okay, well, sorry, you might feel like you have to repeat yourself. And maybe they just don't feel listened to. There's a lot of little things, right? What's and next you just for play you on that? in your life? Next for me. Um, yeah. I don't know. I've thought about getting a doctor, um, but that just sounds like a lot of work and a lot of debt. A what? Um, a lot of work and a lot of debt. No, no, no. I'll, 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 I'll get oh, a, a doctorate. What? Oh, getting a, do- a oh, doctorate. Oh, like- oh, getting a doctorate. That does sound like a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Listen, Aunt. I just want you to know that if you ever want to, like, whatever you th- like, feel like you like a doctorate in what, like, in psychology. Probably, Aunt. I just want you to know. If you ever don't feel like going to more school, you can always go on the internet and pretend to be a therapist, and nothing bad will ever happen to you. (laughs) That's a really good point. I didn't really think about that. (laughs) I'm just saying, think about that before you go get the doctorate. I will. What's next for you? Um... Well, my real answer is I like I want to keep doing this podcast. I want to keep the podcast going, but I talk to well, I really enjoyed talking to you because you don't like me or know who I am, and that was fun. And so I want to do more of that, where like I go out in public, uh, in like foreign countries or wherever, where people don't know who I am, and I just am able to talk to them. Um, mm. So I guess more I do I like doing phone calls, but I want to do more things that involve me uh, talking to real human beings. Now that you're not a real human being, but people I can see and hear and smell and shit. Not in a weird mm-hmm. way. Yeah, you know sometimes it's a weird way. You, know, you can't judge yourself for that. But you said that, not me. Well, I did. I did. It's okay to be a person. Um, no, I love that. What's your fake answer? Um, that's my fake answer. Yeah, you said you want my real answer. Blank. I don't know. I don't have a bit. I don't have a bit. I was gonna try to do a bit about how I'm gonna get a larger lily pad, and then I realized that was a frog thing and not a gecko thing. And I don't, I don't have gecko bits. People do them to me all the time, and I don't know how to yes and them and be in them. With like people will say. Oh, are you on your way to the forest? Or I, they they don't say that. They say something more funny. But I don't know how to. I don't know how to be in that. I only know how to be. Yeah. I'm. Some people are consider themselves trapped in loops of irony, and mm. I'm trapped in a loop of sincerity. I can't joke around anymore. I don't have. I don't know how to do that. Mm. I think. 
I don't know, dude. I think you're pretty good at it. I mean, just don't take yourself too seriously. You're dressed as a gecko, for God's sake. Yeah, I keep forgetting. That's the thing you got to remember to fight yourself, right? Uh, I mean, that's 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 part of it. But Art, do you? How do you feel about Art? Do you feel like your feelings about me have changed in the past forty minutes, or do they stay exactly the same? And you, please tell me the truth. No, for sure. I like you as a person. I'm I'm still not going to listen to you just simply because I don't want to. Um, person. But no, I I've been I've enjoyed talking to you. It's been great. Yeah, man. I've, you know? I've enjoyed talking to you too. I feel like I could have a beer with you, but you know, it's you don't want that in a lot of people. So I think that's the other thing. It's, it's a yeah. My biggest thing is yes, I've enjoyed talking with you, and uh, I am going to continue not listening to you, but. Thanks for your time. See, this was perfect. This is like we said. We 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 enjoyed being in the moment with each other for forty minutes, and now we're gonna go forget about each other. Yep, pretty much. And that's all right. I agree. Yeah. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah, What's your real name? Stage. My real name is Lyle. Lyle. Well, thanks, Lyle. I, you know, I really appreciate it. Appreciate it too. Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Uh, good luck. Go feel your feelings. You know, go let yourself feel and be you. It's hard. It's really hard, but just being open to it is the start. Thank you for calling in. Yeah. Have a good one, man. You too. Take care. Uh, I that was that was you know look that was I've I've been telling you guys I've been wanting to talk to somebody who disagreed with what I do. I'm really lucky. I'm really lucky that like most of the things that people say to me on the internet are nice and they like what I do. I've had real therapists tell me they like this podcast. But I want to talk to people. I want I want uh, contradicting opinions. Throw them at me. Fuck it. Let's just, I'll take on a challenge. I'll admit when I'm wrong. I'll admit if I'm doing something. I don't think I'm doing something dangerous. I think, um, like I said, I'm trying to do it with more journalistic intentions than therapy intentions, but I throw that away all the time. I'll get off of a phone call or I'll listen to a phone call that I had back and I'll be like, fuck, I really was just pretending to be a therapist there. But I'll also be listening back and I'll be like, you know, I didn't say anything that I don't believe in. Uh, I'll totally say things that I'm hypocritical about where I'll tell someone you should go do that. And I'll, you know, not do that. But I but then I'll but then I'll think, but when I'm not doing the thing I told the other person should do, I'll think to myself, man, I should do, do that. It's like if somebody it's like if I told somebody to eat healthy and then I went and. Uh, got those new nerds gummy clusters where it's little clusters of nerds ropes. Um, and while I'm eating those, I'll think, man, I told the other, I hope the other person's doing that because I'm not doing it and I really should be doing it. Anyway, thank you to Ant. Thank you to Veronica. I totally forgot about Veronica. I hope she's doing good. Um, we did it. Fake therapist to real therapist. Hello? <gasps> what? Hi. No. What's going on, man? No. No way. Oh my What's up? god. How you doing? Some <laughs> <Stop> gek. <laughs> How's it going, dude? You see you sound like you have just been in the desert for a month <laughs> and you've finally found uh, society once again. <laughs> It's the energy that I'm getting. Oh, oh my and I guess maybe you oh, were fuck. in a proverbial phone call desert. You were um, calling and calling and calling with no sign of any uh, human being to ever be on the other side of the phone. And now one is. Um, so, what is your name? Will? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Will, uh, how how can I get you today? What's going on? Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm sorry. I, I gotta collect myself a little. I'm trying to find my notepad. 
Um, you had a you had a notepad. You wrote notes for this. Okay, great. <laughs> no, no, no. I uh, uh, I need information from you, Lyle. What information do you need? I'm too lazy to do this on my own, but I have. Um, and I've thought. Oh my! It, oh, can I like sidetrack really quickly? Uh, sure. I we you know what? It's we haven't even begun any track, so your sidetrack would be okay, you know what? the main track at this point. Okay. I'll just main track at this point. This is what I've been waiting for. Just let I've been, any, I've been you, trying throw to, me throw me on whatever track you want. I've been trying to get in touch with you, Lyle, because I I have um I'm living with my parents and I bought like a green screen last week and I really want to start this like podcast and I figured but I don't want to like look up all those tutorials on YouTube on what stuff to buy. So I just thought I'd ask you because I know that you had to go through the same process. And I figured that'd be a cool way to christen, um, in, in, in my own mind, you'd be like christening, like me starting this whole process too. So that might be a big motivator for me. So you're telling me, and by the way, I've seen your call will, I've seen you in this queue every single stream I've done for the past three weeks. And today I decided to pick up. And so you're telling me. That you were too lazy to Google search what equipment you need to start a podcast, but totally willing to call in to this show over 500 times to get the same answer. I don't know if I would consider that. uh, I mean, look, it's an inefficient way to do it, but I don't know if I would consider that laziness. Roundaboutness, for sure. I'm a a big um, believer in people i'm a big believer in doing things your own way and this is just the way i wanted to do it and i was able to put a good amount of work into the way i wanted so listen well i'm not going to tell you what equipment to get to your podcast but i'm going to tell you this uh it does not matter get whatever you can afford that has a microphone and do it you could go and record your podcast on your iphone and that would be fine Okay, I'm I'm going out and doing vlogs and filming shit and everything, and I'm I'm using an iPhone. So, um, uh, you can you all all you can write down in your notebook is uh, whatever I can afford. Okay, I I've seen people spend just wasteful amounts of money. I mean, the fact to me, Will, listen, the fact that you have spent three weeks, you still haven't started the podcast, correct? I have an episode out. You have an okay, so you've started the podcast. Well, I started it my senior year, and then I went to college, and I started it my senior year of high school, and then I went to college, and I really didn't like it. And now I'm back, and now I want to just do my podcast. Okay, don't do the okay. People, this I see this happen to people all the time. They they obsess and freak out over the type of equipment to use, and it stops them from just recording the damn episode or filming the damn video or whatever it is they want to do. Just go and make the thing and don't worry about what equipment you're using. Hmm. Okay. I'll, I'll write that down. Write that down. Is that truly it? Well, you seemed so excited. And I'm, I'm, I feel like there's gotta be more to this. Well, no, I don't want to, like, force anything because, you know, I, like, um, I, I've just been listening to you for, for like, a long time. Like, I'm almost, like, or when I say, oh, I still have, like, a, um, ever since you started putting out more podcast episodes, I've been trying hard to keep up. But I'm almost listening to all your podcast episodes. Um, no, I've, like, I've just been obsessed with you, dude, for, like, over a year now. I just think you're great. I appreciate that. Well, okay. How about this? What What's your podcast about? It's it, I I told <laughs> I told Sage like so many times. This is like non promotional. So I like I'll I'll stay I'll like <laughs> I'll stay true to Sage. I don't want to like I, I like that's what I was afraid of. I didn't want to sound like I was. Well, I will listen. Well, I'm not like, asking. Well, I'm not asking you for what the Instagram page is. I just what's the podcast about? What are you trying to make? I'm I'm trying to make a um, a bug podcast. 
you're trying to make a bug podcast. Uh, are you because eating bugs? Are you talking about bugs? Are you what? What are you doing with bugs on this podcast? Well, because I'd like I've um I'd listened to a lot of podcasts in high school, and um I'm a big true crime fan, and I still am. But I I like listened to like um a good handful of podcasts, and I realized that for all of like it's I feel like it's very gen z and maybe a little past that for people to just have like a common interest in like bugs and to like bugs and i realized that there's no like real someone doing it on their own bug podcast like on spotify or like any bug thing for that matter on spotify so I, uh, um, do you personally like bugs? I'm not crazy about them, but, um, I've worked, I've worked in Okay, stop, hold on, before. hold on, hold on. Okay. So, you're telling me that you don't really care that much about bugs, but you want to start a podcast and you're looking for a niche idea... That nobody has done before. So you're going to force yourself to get into bugs so that you can have a niche podcast. I think me not being totally obsessed with bugs. Um, I, I feel like in the, in the, like the outcome of like the episodes I put out, something about like the, the guy who isn't like, totally crazy about what he's saying but is giving out like factual information seems like someone that I would want to listen to so I'm just going to be that guy I guess you want to make a bug podcast where the whole angle of it is that you could kind of take them or leave them <laughs> In a, uh, like maybe not like surface level people don't see that but like in in a way you know how do you know I any think, how do you do you what would you even talk about do you even know anything about bugs well i did one episode and i made it about the stink bug and i wrote down like a bunch of notes and i um put it out and then me and, and like and then, um, just, I just had like my high school friends, um, would just like be like, yo, like when's the next episode coming out? Cause then I kind of like dropped it. Like I haven't posted in like, I haven't put out the episode and, and okay, or so, I haven't put out so, like, a, so, uh, so, okay. So this stink bug episode, did you, what did you talk about? Did you like research stink bugs and give stink bug facts did you bring on a stink bug ex uh, expert and interview them did you tell personal stories about your relationship with stink bugs like what 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 exactly so about stink format, bugs was the podcast so my format for the stink bug episode was um uh uh it was take you through stink bug life cycle um stink bug fence mechanisms i'm pretty or they don't really have that many. Stink bugs are pretty, like, hot. It was, like, stink bug life cycle, kind of like they're, like, um, like, they're one, two, just, like, they're, like, whole, like, bodies and, like, how, like, you know, each, like, function, um, you know, hibernation, um, like, infestations, general, and then it went to um, stink bug historical event, which was in... 2009 when all these stink bugs were attacking um apple orchards and it cost um like millions upon like it cost like over a million maybe over five million dollars um for apple orchard farmers and and a town's mayor called the bug the bug from hell and that was in like the caption of like the description of the video which i thought was funny and then how to kill stink bugs and how to prevent infestations because they're really um, common, especially in winter. 
And that was the format for that uh, episode. And you don't even like bugs. Well, well, here's the, well, I got really amped up on that. Like I got really amped up for that episode. And that's what, that's why I'm back here now. Cause I, I feel like with your, you know, this, this exchange, I could gain a lot from this exchange. And I think I could get back to that, um, that okay, here's what I here's here's what I'll here's what I'll say to you before we go, Will, is I want you to imagine uh see I'm not I'm what I'm afraid of for you is I'm afraid of this podcast becoming wildly successful. Like you're topping the Spotify charts, you're getting deals from major podcast networks, you're getting the foremost bug experts on your pod and celebrities want to do it and you know, you have millions of YouTube subscribers. That's what I'm worried about because then, Will, I feel like you're going to be trapped in a life of researching and analyzing bugs that you don't even feel strongly about. Oh, well, like, the cool... Like when I started, I'll, I'll, I won't hold you up for too long. I'll just add one more thing. Um, just when I started this whole thing, the like the original thought that I had in mind is this podcast is going to be alive as long as I'm alive. And I don't want to underestimate, you know, like I eat healthy. Like I want to live for a long time. And so that will like by default mean that this podcast will be along, will be around for a long time. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm kind of just at my leisure with it, you know? Will, like, I think I'm you're going to no, be okay. Will, 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 I think, I think I th you, to get to your main question, you're absolutely going to be fine whatever microphone you buy. I think you have what it takes to do this. Do I need a, uh, do I need a camera? I think I might want to add a visual aspect. Maybe that would defeat the... You know what? Here, I'll let you go. I'll let someone else count the phone. What's the they name of the bug podcast? Promote the bug podcast. I want people to listen to it. What's the I don't podcast? want to promote. I promise. No, no, I'm not well, asking you. you. No, 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 you have to. No, you have to. <laughs> you have to now. Sage, like Sage knew. I it doesn't new. matter. It doesn't. I don't. I, I don't. Will, what's the name of your bug podcast? It's called Bug Rest. What is it? Mm -hmm. It's one word. It's B U G R A S T. Bug rest. What does that mean? We um. I have a co-host that hasn't made an appearance you on have the a podcast co -host. yet. He, well, because he is at college, but he's my good buddy, David. If you're listening, he's my good buddy. Um, and uh, I I can't remember like. I think we were just like going back and forth over the name and we figured that Bugrass podcast is something that we both really liked. So we just named it Bugrass. Okay, I'm going to go listen to your stink bug episode. <laughs> it's no <laughs> listen to it in 2 weeks. The the first episode is so bad. No, it's I'm going to listen to it. No, 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 I'm listening. I'm listening to it. It's too late. Well, thank you very much for calling. Thank you so much, Gek. Have a great night. Um, you know, one day, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a guest on the Bug Ra the Bug Rass podcast. I would love to be a guest on the Bug Rass podcast. I don't know anything about bugs, but I feel like I know as much about bugs as both of those guys do. And here's why they're here, they're gonna be fine, and they're gonna be fine because they didn't let the whole thesis of that call if we wanted to attribute something to it it's about not letting minor things get in the way you know will didn't have nice microphones he didn't care he wanted to start a podcast will doesn't know anything about bugs he didn't care he wanted to start a bug podcast will doesn't even like bugs and he didn't let that stop him so I think he's going to be completely fine.